Hey, what's up guys? We have a much longer than usual video today, so I am not gonna drag this intro out. I will jump right into the backstory and then we'll hop right into it. Every single minute of this video is packed full with things that are happening. There's not a whole lot of downtime and uh, it, there's just a lot of nuggets sprinkled in there of things that just kept popping up left and right. So I picked this up last fall. It must've been, I don't know, five, six months ago. I was told it had electrical issues. I paid 150 bucks for it. It's a Simplicity Regent 38 inch deck with a 14 horsepower Kohler command engine in it. Looking back on it now, I probably paid more than I should have for it, but we're here and you know, we're in it now. start going through some of the uh, some of the vitals they said it had some kind of a relay issue there is a Weingarts sticker on it which for those of you that are not familiar Weingarts is a kind of a local chain uh, dealer around here I think there's like four or five of them in southeast Michigan uh, that actually looks really good oh no it doesn't it's kind of dark in there kind of black but So we do have some oil spilling out. There's just like some, you know, crap down in there. So, wow, the oil in it looks beautiful and it looks to be full. Actually doesn't smell bad at all. It smells very good. There's just oil blowing all over. So I'm assuming that oil is from when it's when it's on and when it's kicking over, it's probably just dripping out of somewhere. We'll figure that out later. Okay, I wanna take a look at that uh, battery situation. Oh, what do you got going on here, bud? I'm gonna assume, I'll get the multimeter. I'm gonna assume that battery has almost no life left in it. But maybe it does, who knows? Looking for a date. We got no date. Somebody ripped the date sticker off of this because I can't find it. Again, I'm not giving this too much hope. Yeah, I mean, it, it gave us a little bit, but uh, that battery is completely toast. All right, well, I'm at a minimum. I'm gonna get this uh, kind of soldered back together. I uh, like to live on the edge. You should probably wear some kind of a uh, respirator mask, especially if you're doing this like long term, you know, like right now, I don't really care. But uh, if you're breathing this stuff in every day, you, uh, you will probably make an early exit from this earth. Uh, what's that? PPE. That's uh, been a big COVID term. Social distancing, herd immunity, PPE, all things that some people knew about before, but everybody knows about them now. I'll give you a close up of close up of my work. Pretty good. That one's a little bit that was a little bit choppy, but that top one really good. But I did not put any heat shrink on there, which can't go back and put that on after. Whoops. And we can hook a uh, jumper pack to it. We can put power right to the starter too. That's always an option. Give you a reference of what's down there. Try to focus. Okay, that looks like a solenoid, that thing right there. I think all we did here is some people clip that. That way they can start it with the, uh, you don't have to be sitting down in the seat or the parking brake on for that to be functioning. It's just a safety thing. Obviously they want people on the mower to be, you know, on when you're on the mower and off when you're off the mower, unless you have the parking brake on. It's just, you know, just a safety thing. So I think that's all we did there. What we'll do is I just want to see, you know, I just want to see that it spins over. We'll get a jumper pack hooked up to this and then we'll just turn the key and we'll see what happens. She didn't say it cranked, but she didn't say it didn't crank. So that's something to note. All right, here we go. Crank. Ah, oh, come on. So we can put power straight to the starter. We're going to need to fix that, that relay if, if what they were saying was accurate. So this should, when I touch this to the starter, to that, uh, that solenoid nut or whatever that is, that should crank the engine, hopefully. Okay, I don't have my ground. I'm just dying down this, maybe it's on a power stroke. Here we go. This needs a little bit more juice. All 
So I'm starting to think that, I, I think that solenoid is good and here's how we tell. So if and when I go to start it, you should hear it click and that's that, you know, the internal components are there. So we can hear it click, right? So now across those two posts on the top, focus your attention on that right there. We should have, when that happens, we should have continuity uh, across those two posts. So now when I put those across those two posts, I'm, I've never been very good with chopsticks. So we should have continuity there, which we do. So our solenoid is not the culprit. Even if we do get this going, like I was going to say, that, that the oil is just blowing everywhere. So I, that scares me less than what we're dealing with right now. The electrical and all that stuff, it, it can start to get somewhat complicated. The mechanics of the engine are fairly straightforward once you understand them. So here is that starter. I just ripped it off. Should be able to give power right to the right to it. So that should be it should be popping up. Just for reference, here is a different starter. So now I'm gonna put power right to this. It should just pop up. So we know this thing is probably bad. I'm gonna look this up and uh I think we're starting to narrow in on that is our issue. All right, guys, we are a couple days later. I have a starter that I got off of Amazon. I was OEM, 60 bucks, a little bit more than I wanted to spend, but you know, whatever. So we're currently at 200 bucks into this. Uh, by the way, I was just noticing this. If you remember, or if you're a follower of this channel, that is oil all over the ceiling. We picked up a snapper. A uh, little push mower out of the junkyard and it had finally ended up getting it to kick over and this oil There was like this deflector up out the muffler and it just came Yeeting out of there and I didn't realize that it went all over the ceiling. I feel like each time I look deeper There's more of that oil like Lucas has that like thick honey stabilizer I think it, it claims that it you know seals stuff There is our winner I have a trickle charger, and over the last 36 or so hours, however long it took this to get here, I didn't charge that thing. Don't ask me why. We should have, well, unless it's a different issue, we should have some activity coming from that, that motor. That starter should pop up if that, was the, if that was the problem, so hopefully it was. I'm just going to leave this all right there. So I'm not going to move you. I will go plug the uh, jumper pack on and then I'll get everything. This parking brake is already down, all that stuff. And then we'll crank it over and we will hope for the best. So here we go. Nice. They said it had some pretty, I don't want to say major. They, they just said it needed some uh, electrical attention, obviously. So they, they must have jumped to worst case scenario. I, I, I want to say, you know, again, Weingarts, this is a, uh, it's a pretty reputable dealer around here in Michigan. I really hope they didn't take it to Weingarts and they didn't know what to do because I'm just a dumb kid in a garage with, you know, at least a half a brain and didn't take us too long to kind of follow the, the path. Hopefully Weingarts, I have faith in you that that was not the case. I am going to safely assume, which is never really a good thing, but I'm going to safely assume that it has spark. Fuel system didn't smell too bad, but all it takes is just a little bit of gunk. All right, guys, uh, first and foremost, I just want to point this out. That, I love this light. That is obviously without it, and that is a painful experience for you. So hopefully you appreciate the light as much as I do. We're enough charged, I think, to where we can kind of get it up over the hill while we're cleaning the carb or whatever. If we need to charge a little bit more, that's fine. But I think we got enough juice now. All right, before we crank it over, get that plug out of there. There is so much carbon on there. Okay, uh, you know, a little bit better. 
still a little bit of crap on it. Probably just replace that. You know, they're cheap enough. All right, guys, uh, I, I just got pulled into something. I don't even know what the last thing we said was. And then um, had an Italian sub for lunch and a soda pop. And I, it's like 20 minutes later and I totally forgot. That's pretty secure. I'm actually, contrary to how much I've been building up the light, we'll actually go off with the light for this example. Do we have spark? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Let's just crank it for a minute. So that's good. I think our fuel pump is good. So good, that uh, that is probably flooded like crazy. Okay. All right, how cool would it be if it just kept running, huh? Well, we'll see. No choke, full throttle. Here we go. A lot of fuel in there. I just want to hear it a little bit more. Oh yeah. That actually sounded pretty stinking good. We gotta get that carb off, we'll clean it. You know, just kind of get the fuel system right. Again, I think the fuel pump is working and I do actually, that uh, I'll, I'll show you later in the video, that fuel line right there going from the filter to the pump, uh, that one is kind of broke and dripping. I actually do have uh, a new fuel filter and I got a couple of, uh, couple of old lines. So probably not gonna show taking the carb off, like physically off, but then we'll kind of go through the jets and stuff together and whatever. So other than just kind of making sure the PTO engages and uh, you know, make sure the thing kind of drives and, and there's nothing really major wrong with the transmission, which again, I don't think, I think that starter that went bad, I don't think there's any, fingers crossed, I don't think there's gonna be anything major wrong with it. Uh, if you haven't noticed by now in the video, that tire is completely flat and that one back there is also very flat. So I might need to throw some tubes in there. Other than that, just you know, sharpening the blade, kind of checking out the underside of that deck, uh, the spindles, all that stuff. And then the last thing, which is, arguably maybe the most important thing, I don't know why I saved it for last, is all of that oil caked on there. I think what we might do is get that carb off really quick, fire it up, let it run for a little bit, maybe get that engine warmed up, and then uh, you know just kind of let it cool down a couple degrees, take it outside, you know, hit it with some uh, Dawn dish soap, and just kind of get the dirt and oil and grease all loosened up, and then just kind of power wash it off, and, and then run it again, maybe cut with it. This is just me going through, making a plan. So I got that carb off of there and that shut off solenoid is on there and it's got two flat notches. And I think it's a 13 millimeter or a half or something and I can't get that in there. So you can go over it, you can go under it, or you can go through it. That is my homemade bench grinder. Do not try this at home. We like to live on the edge here. See if that did the trick. And I don't want to get branded, so I'm gonna be very careful not to touch it. It'd be funny if I did the wrong size. I actually think I did. Ow. There we go. All right, probably not the right size, but it ended up working out for us. Good. Wow, that looks fantastic. Okay, great. I did heat up the ultrasonic cleaner. I don't think that we need it. I know we all know about Chinese carbs. It has Mexico printed on it. I'm not sure if Kohler OEM is Mexico. It doesn't matter either way. I think I'm safely assuming that this is maybe an aftermarket carb. Not that it matters. What does it even matter? Whatever. I was working on something the other day. I was spraying carb spray in it and whatever Oh gosh, whatever port that I was spraying it into, it came straight back up right into my eyeball. No glasses on, nothing as I'm just doing it again. But uh, man, that I, I, for a minute there, I didn't really know what to think about my, the future of my vision. Just like that. That looks phenomenal. The 
this too, by the way, is probably the messiest that I'll have my workbench at any given moment. So uh, just like cords going across, carburetor, spray, Coke cans, branding tools, gross. I do want to uh, replace that fuel filter. There's a little bit of gas left in the tank. The color looks fine. It smells just fine. This looks a little bit dark, so I don't know if this is just some old gas or maybe that filter kind of has an orange tint to it. That's, that's what we'll go with. I'm going to replace that. So I'm going to keep that fuel shut off, kind of cut there and then, uh, you know, just let that ride all the way up there and then just kind of address from here forward. Ugh. If, uh, if you work on anything small engine and you don't have a pair of these, I think these are, these are called by the manufacturer, uh, fuel line, fuel line players or fuel hose players or whatever. This is Pittsburgh brand I got at Harbor Freight. There was like this one, a bigger one, and like a, like a small, medium, and large one. I mean, the, I think the whole set was like seven bucks. These are awesome. If you don't have these, uh, go get them. No BS affiliate links or anything like that, but uh, just go to Harbor Freight. Whether you're a fan of them or not, I would probably lean, I'm not like huge fan of Harbor Freight, even though they have they have their place. You know, we all probably have thoughts on on Harbor Freight, but if I had a gun to the temple and you said, hey, you got to go there or not go there, I'm probably saying not go there. You know, you do save a lot of money though, but kind of get what you pay for in most, most instances. All right, shut up about Harbor Freight. Come on. Ooh, that fuel line looks fine. That one's cracked. I know there's diaphragms and there's important stuff in these fuel pumps. I am going to hit a little teeny bit of compressed air, a teeny tiny bit. I'll get you guys set up on the opposite side so that way you can kind of see what comes out of that fuel line. Right there. Okay, just a teeny tiny bit. That looks to me a whole mess of water, maybe. That does not look very good. A lot of sediment came out of there. Sorry, this light is, there's a decent amount of crap that actually came out of there. So glad we did that. And I'm debating whether or not I want to get that one. That's starting to crack. Let's just see. Yeah, that works. What do you want? Hey, babe. Okay, sorry about that. I had to take that call. There you go. Might crank four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever times, because remember that, uh, that carb is completely empty and that fuel line and that fuel pump are, they're all just kind of empty. Just be mindful of that. That's what I'll be thinking about. All right, here we go.
Okay, so once again, guys, I got pulled away after that seafoam outing uh, for dinner. This whole project has been kind of cut up over segments in my day today, but it starts, it runs, it sounds great. Really does. Figured out why they clipped that now. I, I should have known, but uh, there's some relay issue with the seat safety. I, I believe the seat safety switch, I think, might be bad. I'm not sure. So we have to dive into that. Every time I wanted to take the parking brake off, you could tell it wanted to like, it wanted to die. That switch is, it's just a safety thing, right? They just want to make sure the parking brake is on while it's running. And if you get up and you stand up, it uh, shuts off just for, for obvious reasons, especially with a mower like this. I think this is, you just have it in gear and then you just have a brake. And when you let off the brake, it just starts to go and then you can change your speed. And then that makes you stop. And we'll see if that battery's hanging on. I think it's been about two hours since it started. And then I'm gonna power wash it. I'm gonna get it clean. I'm gonna douse it in Dawn dish soap and just let that soak in there after it's warmed up and ran for about 15 to 20 minutes. Just help loosen a lot of that crap. All that, you know, that, you know, that gunk. All right, well, you might not be able to tell, but that is a hundred times better. Let me get, let me get that trusty light. So, you know, you can't get everything. There's still a couple little things, but I mean, it is. This camera, when I'm looking at the screen, it's not doing it justice. I wanna look, I wanna look at that seat safety switch. It looks like there's just two, three, four bolts. Oh my word. Well, there's a whole bunch of crap in there. Here we go. Is that a mouse nest? Well, I think it is. Here we go. Probably should have gloves on. This is like some like bedding material. That is an interesting place for, for a critter. There's not that much room in there. I don't see any feces, which means they probably moved in and then they, they didn't really like it. They needed a, you know, a four bedroom, not a two bedroom. So if you see that black wire, see how they kind of chewed it a little bit? Could very well be that part, but we don't know. So I don't even know what I'm taking off here. I think this is just like a like a bracket or something. Seat safety, seat safety switch bracket. When weight sits on the seat, it pushes this down, which pushes this, uh, you know, seat safety switch down, and that's what allows uh, spark. I believe that is ground that grounds out, and then that um, closes the circuit, opens the circuit, closes the circuit, opens the circuit, whichever it is. These are replaceable. We can test these things. So it's it, it's obviously either one of these two. I have seen some pretty harshly chewed wires perfectly, you know, working and fine. Electric is not my forte. What very well could be the issue is. This guy, I actually think I have one of these. I, I think these are universal. So it has continuity. It does not have, con hold on. Yeah, this might be our issue because I, I feel like this should not have continuity. And then when you sit down on it is when that current can flow through there. So I feel like this should have no continuity and then which it already does, which it shouldn't, I think. I'm just thinking out loud. And then when I push this button, it should show continuity, which it already does. So now it's showing nothing, absolutely nothing. Yeah, I think this thing is faulty. This thing is all over the place. I'm gonna go dig up another one of these. I think I have one. Uh, we'll test that. We'll just kind of compare notes. And I do have two. I think they're the same, they're just different colors. That other one was really sporadic. So see how this is, this has good continuity right now. It's very consistent, it's not all over the place, and then the continuity stops. So watch it, watch it just kind of settle in, right? So, you know, do, 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 you know, and then no continuity. So this maybe is a better piece. Here's the other one. So if you notice, first of all, it's not showing any continuity right now. Right, and then it shouldn't. 
So I'm trying to see, there it goes, but oh, it's on and off. See how it's on and off? It's just high. It's like, you know, 200, 130, 144, 142, 152, none. Gotta be our issue. I am gonna cut the camera off. I'm gonna get this put back on. That, at the same time, that'll allow us to kind of drive it around and test it. So uh, if it doesn't shut off when we take that parking brake off. So let me do that and let's hurry, hurry, hurry. gas. Oh, that gas line was shut off. Okay, what a day. This thing has just kicked my butt today. I have cut this whole project up into just segments and uh, I'm, frankly, I'm just over it for tonight. <laughs> calling it a day, calling it a win for the night. So, um, if you can see at the very end, I, I stood up and I did not have the parking brake on and it shut off. That's, you know, most of you probably know that, that little safety feature, but that is the switch and that is what our problem was. The last really like major thing is that oil kind of blowing out, which, you know, there's nothing significant leaking out. I think running through, maybe cutting the grass a couple times with it, and then just just seeing seeing how it responds to, you know, being under stress. Looks like they did like patchwork on this deck. That is not from the factory. And it looks like they spray painted it because that's all, that's a big spot. They actually did a pretty good job. You can't really tell unless you point it out, but, um, it's got a mulch kit on it, so that's good. So I, again, other than that oil blowing out of wherever it's blowing out of, I mean, the only thing left is is sharpen the blades and, uh, you know, address those those tires. That striper bar, this striper roller, really like that. Leaves a nice, nice deep stripe, whatever you mow over. All right, let's get these tires off and we'll figure out what's going on with the slow leak, if there's just a rim leak or if there's some kind of a hole somewhere and uh, we'll figure that out. I'm gonna try to avoid using tubes if I can. I want to uh, fill them up with air so that way wherever that slow leak is coming from, we'll use some soapy water and then that'll reveal itself where that is. So let's get some air. A little bit of dry rot. I'm already seeing some activity right there and right there and right there and right there. So that's kind of a bummer. Here's a close up for you. So that you can see that is bubbling out of there. And it looks like over here too, there's some, there's some chatter right there. It looks like there's a little teeny bit right there and some right there. I think we might need to throw a tube in that one. Let's check this back one. Hopefully we'll have a little bit better luck with this. There's a huge crack in here, so I'm afraid that one might need a tube as well. Okay, so there's our, uh, there's our crab. 
is it coming from? Just like right there. Feel that bubbling. This is where that big uh, dry rot split is. It starts, pretty much starts like right here and it goes all the way up to like there. So it's probably, I mean, it's probably a good four, four inches maybe. They hold enough air for me to probably cut the grass for an hour or so. You just don't want to have to do that every single time. It's just a pain in the butt. So unfortunately these will need tubes. I'm not a huge tube fan just because it's always a pain in the butt. And I don't have one of those, those tire tube presser splitter things to separate them. So I kind of <laughs> always got to struggle with it by hand. A lot of times what I ended up doing it, if I, if I do do that is I, I'll just run it up to like, you know, our local tire place and they, they usually just, it's like five bucks and they're, they're done with it. And you know, 12 seconds. All right, so now would be as good a time as any to get under there and take a look at the underside of that deck. It's always good too. If you got something jacked up, just like give it a push. Just kind of like make sure it's somewhat stable. I want to keep my face. Always love seeing that. Okay, I guess you're coming. Let me adjust the camera settings really quick. Do you see anything wrong with those blades? They're on upside down. So that, that little wing is supposed to be facing up so that lifts, you know, that pulls all the grass blades up before it slices them. Get those blades off and get them sharpened up. Looks like that one is like, like 10 inches and this one's like 20 inches. So it must be like a weird simplicity gig. Get some of that crap out of there. Definitely have seen worse. This is not that bad. However, you can see there's a lot of uh, like that deck material, like that's all, that is half grass, half metal. Those clumps will get stuck up in there and they trap moisture. And as you know, moisture, and water and metal, you know, begins to rust. The cleaner and the less clumpy you can keep it, the better. All right, got those blades all nice and sharpened up. This is the longer one of the two. This one actually had a pretty decent chunk knocked out of it. So I kind of had to take some back and then I had to, you know, just kind of hammer the side a bunch more just to get the metal even, but it does balance. I put it on the balancer and then here's that, here's that little guy, pretty decent shape. All right, guys, back from tractor supply. I don't have a tire bead remover tool, you know, that thing that you get on and you press down. I do have a pair of ratcheting clamps, which obviously the depth on this is not that much. It's, it's just little. I'm gonna struggle my way through this and try to get this off of there as best as I can. It really helps if you have some kind of a um, WD-40 works, you know, used, mar used motor oil. This is just an aerosol oil. Put that stem in first, clip that so that way it just doesn't get sucked back into it. both sides popped in. So it doesn't have a recommended PSI on here. So I'm just gonna go like maybe, I don't know, 15. Same exact process for the other one. You can just kind of copy and paste what we did here with that one. All right guys, well that's gonna wrap this one up. I've decided I'll probably hang on to this for a little bit and you know, just maybe mow with it for two, three, four, weeks, maybe a month or two. That'll give us a good uh, good opportunity maybe for a follow-up and 
you know, maybe if we end up having to pull that engine off, split it apart, just re-gasket it, whatever the case may be. I will get a few uh, seconds of footage of it cutting here in a second. I'm actually gonna have to do that tomorrow because it is raining outside. I don't know why I just looked at my watch. It's raining outside, it's supposed to be raining for the rest of the day and I think tomorrow is supposed to be fine. So uh, we'll, we'll get that tomorrow. We'll follow up on this one and we'll check in and see how it's doing. But if you've made it this far in the video, thank you. You are incredible. Appreciate you joining. Hopefully you found some value, some entertainment, and please enjoy this footage of me cutting the grass with this thing. not done here. It needs a new air filter. Uh, I'll probably just change the oil filter while I'm at it. We'll check in to see how those tubes are doing. We'll obviously check in to see how that, you know, how that blowing oil is doing and if we need more attention there. That'll probably be the main thing if we have to rip that engine off. I kind of just don't want to take the engine off anyways and just kind of clean it, you know, back and behind where I couldn't get that are still just cake oil on there. Unfortunately, it will need a new battery. This one's just not holding a charge. And then one of the last little things is that little plastic piece, I think I mentioned it, that, that you know, that trim that goes around the shifter. Every time you go to shift, that, that if you're not careful, that thing can just pop up and off. It's just like a really pesky annoyance to have there. So we'll figure out something with that too. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up button. If you have made it this far, I really commend you. This is a lot longer of a video than we usually have. So thank you for joining. Follow me on social media at Chris X Outdoors. Uh, say hi and until the next video, later.